for breast cancer screening for women and the political issues related to that. There was a new article this week by Daniel Kopens, who's a professor at Harvard, and he's taking on head-on this idea that women should not get mammography. Now, of course, insurance companies like that because they don't pay for mammography. The government likes it because they don't pay for it or the treatment. Uh, there's this whole idea that women should start at age 50 rather than age 40, and some are even talking about not having mammography at all, if you can believe that. So he writes, and it was just in the uh, Wall Street Journal, that there's a disconcerting effort to reduce women's access to mammography screening for breast cancer by making it seem useless or even harmful. And he writes, the movement dates back to November 2009 during the debate over Obamacare when the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, which reports to Congress, dropped its recommendation for mammography screening to start at age 40 and move it to 50. So you can imagine how many women there are in America in their 40s. If you stop screening, how much money they'll save. So it's great for them. But in 2009, nobody on that task force had any experience caring for women with breast cancer. There was no experience. Yet the task force decided that it would spare women in their 40s mammography. Can you believe it? The task force, he writes, neglected to explain that although 10% of women are recalled, it's estimated that thousands of women will die because they don't have mammography. He writes, remarkably, the new recommendation came even though the task force's own computer models showed that as many as 100,000 women in their 30s whose lives could be saved by annual screening starting at age 40 would eventually die from breast cancer as a result of waiting till 50. Now, there was a public outcry. It was immense. And all of a sudden, the Obama administration backed down. Yeah, of course, they didn't want to alienate millions of voters for the next election. The scientific data, including large randomized studies, shows that screening for breast cancer saves lives. Screening began in the United States in the 1980s. In 1990, the mortality rate from breast cancer was unchanged for 50 years, began to decline. Today, there's 30% less women who die from breast cancer than would have if we had the early 1990s-style death rate. That's about 15 to 20,000 lives saved a year. So for someone who's seen it in my own family, who sees it with my patients every day, I would urge women to have mammography. I would urge if we could, to get the government out of our lives and let women and their physicians decide when to have the mammography, to do self-examination, to have a physician exam. Actually, the last patient I talked about with cervix cancer, I found a mass in the woman's breast myself. She never had that before. It's related to physician exam. We sent her for mammography. She would get tested, hopefully found early, before the cancer has spread, if it is a cancer. So again, I urge you to get mammography, get screening, know the facts before you make a decision. And similarly, there's an article from the Washington Post this week that shows that Washington, D.C. hospitals that treat black women in a large proportion are seeing more advanced breast cancer. There's a hospital called the MedStar Washington Hospital Center. They're trying to find out why black women are showing up for treatment with advanced breast cancer at almost double the national average. There were 1,700 women who went to the hospital for breast cancer treatment between 2006 and 2011. 18% had stage 3 or stage 4 breast cancer. Now, again, the stage is how far advanced the cancer has traveled. There's stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4. Stage 4 means the cancer is metastatic. Nationally, about 10% of breast cancer 
cases are diagnosed at stage three or four. At this hospital, it was 18% or almost double. So most of the studies are showing that, unfortunately, women in the black community are waiting. They're waiting to get worked up, waiting to get diagnosed, and, in fact, even waiting for treatment after being diagnosed. So, again, I would urge you all not to wait. We have, de- we have developed something called the Urgent Cancer Consultants, where we promise you we will see you within one business day and very commonly within one business day we can get you staged up if you just have a lump of cancer and we've seen many women who come to us with a lump they don't know if it's cancer or not if you have a lump in your breast call us we can get you taken care of possibly even put a needle in that lump get you an answer cancer or not cancer now remember the majority of abnormalities on mammography, 80% are not cancer. So don't fear. The only thing to fear is ignorance. So please don't fear, but please call us. Our office number is 212-CHOICES. We're located at 38th and Broadway. Our exact address is 1384 Broadway, which many people ask. We're super convenient. We're not only super convenient. I think we're super We take your calls. There's not machines. There's doctors, not students. We respect your time, spend time with you, get to the bottom of the issue, and get you hopefully on the road to recovery. I want to change topics just one more moment. We had a gentleman who came in, 77 years old. He had been separated for 10 years from his wife. He's going back to his wife, so it's a beautiful thing. And he came in with an elevated PSA. His PSA was 4.55. It was repeated, and on repeat, it was 4.66. He never had a biopsy. He is a pretty healthy man. He can bench press with his feet 550 pounds. And he's going to come to us. He came to us, and we got him hooked up to get a biopsy of his prostate. So he has a small chance, probably about a 20% chance of having cancer. But he wants to know, does he have cancer or not? He's 77. He's in good health. He doesn't want to die. He wants to live. And a typical 77-year-old man is going to live another 15, 20 years. So he's more likely to make it to 100 than some of us younger folks. So if you have an elevated prostate, specific antigen if you're concerned about prostate cancer or if you have prostate cancer we're a cancer treatment center we would encourage you to come in and see the data if you look at our new prostate cancer booklet which just came out if for example you went and had surgery for a low risk cancer your chance of success is 90%. With us, it's even higher. And with us, you have a better chance of keeping your sex life and urinary life and avoiding that radical surgery. Now, we know only about 3% of men have no sexual problem after surgery. This is a study done from Harvard, published earlier this year. We know that 80% of men after surgery for prostate cancer have problems with urine, mainly leaking of urine, and 97% have sexual problems, meaning erections inadequate for intercourse. With us, almost every man maintains their urinary life, and the vast majority keep their sex life. And with us, there's no radical surgery with better chance of being cancer-free. So I'll be happy to show you that data if you contact us. Uh, we have a booklet to send you at no charge and DVD just by calling us at 212 212- choices. This is Dr. Lederman speaking. We're from Radio Surgery in New York, and we're trying to provide you information to live better, to live longer, do things not to spend your money, time, energies that will lead to life that's not good. We want to put you on the trajectory for a good, healthy life. We're going to stop now for a moment, a short moment, to hear from our sponsor, 
Again, we're taking your calls. We're live at the WABC studio. And after this short message, we'll be right back with more information for you. Thank you. Here's Dr. Gil Lederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board-certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo surgery or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, first in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate, all custom-tailored for you. Call 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212-CHOICES, 212-CHOICES. You know, cancer, it's not prejudice, it strikes everyone. We've seen the racists with the big C. We've seen humanitarians struck down with the big C. But there are remedies, even if you've already had different measures of treatment, like prior chemo, surgery, or radiation that didn't work. Now, I'm telling you, there's a guy out there who is clearly the best at this. First tryout or second tryout, that's Dr. Gil Lederman. My personal experience in 1991 is he came up with a remedy for my dad. Others had passed on it or just couldn't figure it out. He was able to save my dad's life, and my family will always, always be grateful to him. But look, if you have newly diagnosed and recurrent cancers anywhere in the body, Gil Lederman's the guy to go to. He's a brain and prostate cancer as well as body cancer expert, also treating breast, lung, pancreas, liver, kidney cancers, and more. So to hit the cancer... You call 212 Choices and set up an appointment with Dr. Gil Lederman. 212 Choices. Or do it for someone that you know won't do it for themselves. He'll send you an informative booklet DVD in advance, and then you cop a squat with him at his offices at 38th and Broadway. Dr. Gil Lederman takes most insurances, Medicare, and Medicaid. Just call Dr. Gil Lederman for your cancer treatment choices at 212 Choices. 212 Choices. 212 Choices. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the first in New York with fractionated brain radio surgery, and he's the first in America and in the Western Hemisphere with body radio surgery. Hey, Dr. Lederman, we're back. Hey, we're back. We're back and talking about a new case. Actually, it's not a new case. It's a gentleman that I spoke to you about in March. Uh, This is a 61-year-old man. And in March, we talked about having a cough, shortness of breath, weight loss for four months. And he was going to an urgy care center. He had an x-ray, which showed an abnormality. He got an MRI of the spine for four months. He went back and forth and back and forth doing all kinds of tests. He never got a diagnosis. He never got a biopsy. He never got staging in four months. He came to us. He came on March 5th, 2014. We worked him up in one day. We got him staged. We got a biopsy. We found out exactly what he had, which was a non-small cell lung cancer, metastatic stage four. He had a large mass in the lung. He asked us to treat the large mass with radio surgery, which we did. And then he and his wife decided to have chemotherapy, which was great with me. He had chemotherapy, went to another facility. And now he came back this week. And they got, instead of a PET scan, they got a CAT scan, which was not compared to the prior study. So number one, if you want to get the best imaging and most people would want to know exactly where is my cancer and is the chemo working or not? Wouldn't you want to know that? You wouldn't want to get chemo unnecessarily if it's not working. Now, the patient believes the only thing that got better is the tumor that we treated with radiosurgery, and we actually did the calculation showing it shrank by 80% in volume. The cancer that we treated in the lung 
with radio surgery, five treatments shrank by 80%. Unfortunately, the rest of the body, because of the tests they did, couldn't 